All right, this morning we are on part three of one verse. Um, this is why I don't preach all the time. So, because it would take me 30 years to get through Matthew 1. And, <laughs> but, no, really, this is uh, just this whole time, just to be an encouraging time, guys. How many of you guys have gone and actually read this passage or thought about it throughout the week, um, hopefully committing it to memory? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and they loved not their lives even under death. It's it's such a powerful section, and it's so fitting because it's written to the end time. I mean, you don't even have to do much with it. It applies to us so practically. So today, what we're going to focus on, good, I was a little worried that wouldn't show up all that well. So today, we're going to focus on the word of their testimony. Um... I put the castle here because I was thinking about it. It's like when we conquer and when we go throughout our lives, we have just our daily walk, just our daily going around things. And we know as things happen and as this world keeps spinning, uh, things seem to go sideways and whatnot. And when we have the victory and when we have the conquering and when we overcome things like that, I put this castle up there because... Anytime you, I think the closest castle is Coronado Heights, right? That would, we would consider a castle. If you haven't been there, go there, hike up there, check it out. It's pretty neat. It's a guard post, but it's, it's, it's similar to this. It's the best we've got within an hour. But when you see that castle, it's not their right mistake, right? You can look at that and you're like, somebody took diligent time to plan where they wanted to put that. They took diligent time to make sure it was on ground that it would actually hold such a massive structure. At the time when castles were being built, they were the pinnacle of military might. They were the way of somebody going into a place and they built a castle and it was pretty much like, this is my place now and you are not stopping me. There were a few hundred years where when you built a castle, you were undefeated. It took people a long time to figure out how to conquer castles, to build the catapults and the trebuchets, and to figure out how to actually overcome the stronghold of what a castle is. And I put that up there because when I look at word of their testimony and this aspect of what we're going to touch on today, it specifically ties in here. So I kind of want to break down these two words The word of their testimony. So, word and testimony. So, word there, and I'm going to say it American, logos. It's not the right way to say it, but that works for us. Um, And the definition here is a recorded saying or thoughts of general purpose and use previously or specifically put together for broad application. And I put the picture of this castle here because that castle was specifically planned. It is for a general use, for the protection of the land, the protection of the people, for a strategic outpost. Generally, it was used in those ways. And it had a broad application. So when I think about our testimony, guys, and that's what we're thinking on today, that's how we're applying this today, I think of how do we make sure we have it in a way that is broadly usable and acceptable and has application in our daily lives. Just like a castle just like a stronghold for us. And the testimony there, I don't know how to say that word, even though it gives me the pronunciation. I'm not going to take the time. You can see it, English testimony. It comes from the Greek word there, which if you know how to spell, which I don't, but it reminds you of the word that we have in English, martyr. That's the root word of it, which is just a witness. But testimony is evidence given judicially or genitive case, recorded, report, testimony, or witness. I take that from the Strong's Concordance. So when it says the word of their testimony, I like to think about it as the word there for logos. There is something that has pre-planned, that was set aside, that you have thought about, just like this castle. You have put some time into it. You've figured out where it's going to go. You've figured out how you're going to apply it. With your testimony, have we thought about it? Have we thought about how we can share it? Have we thought about the implications in our society in that way, and that way we can share it in a way that makes sense? Just when, there's castles that were built that were a waste of time. 
They were abandoned immediately because they did not put them in a right place. And they had no use. And those castles aren't around anymore because they had no use. They weren't maintained. They fell apart. You can see the ruins of them, but they were not successful. My hope and goal today is that when we think about our testimonies, it's not an abandoned castle. It's not something that if you were called upon the stage right now to give your testimony, you wouldn't start freaking out in a dramatic fashion. Even if you were called up here and I told everybody else to plug their ears so that nobody could possibly hear you, we turned off the stream, that you wouldn't freak out about it. That you'd be prepared for it. You'd be prepared to do that. Because it's, it's that important, guys. It's one of my favorite parts of this passage. It says, they overcame him. Remember, who's the they? The believers. We overcame him who is? Oh, yes, the devil, the Satan. By the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. How do we have the word of our testimony, guys? By the blood of the Lamb. It all hinges. The foundation of everything that we are and everything we believe and everything that we have is on the blood of the Lamb. I love the fact that God gives us. He's like, hey, you're going to defeat the devil by my blood and your testimony. You don't have a testimony without the blood. You don't even have close to an access to use that without the blood of Jesus. I love that God looks at us and he goes, I love you so much. I want to walk with you so much. I want us to work together so much that I'm going to give you a tool that I'm going to list in the same sentence as my blood. Have you ever thought about your testimony, your life story, and our modern vernacular, the way that you have lived, met Christ, and lived beyond that, in the same level, in the same usage, in the same authority and power? I believe we should. I believe we should see our testimonies that way. Not being raised in the church, when I came into the church, you know, my wife has admitted to this, and I'll call her out, I don't think she's going to mind, but she's admitted to times of feeling like her testimony was lackluster. And I've heard that many times throughout my Christian walk, where somebody is like, you know, I just don't have that dramatic testimony. I didn't have that, you know, the vision on the side of the road, or the, I was, I should have died, but I didn't die, it was just... It, it just, yeah, and here I am. And honestly, the first thing that comes into my mind anytime I hear that, and I don't say this, I don't know if my wife knew I thought this until just the other day when I told her, I said, my honest first thought is the scripture where Jesus says, those who have been forgiven much love much. And the first thought I have is, you cannot love the Lord very much then if you honestly see yourself that pathetically. I want to encourage you guys, if you've ever thought about your testimony like that, repent. Literally, repent. That was paid for by the blood. He went through literal hell and back, poured himself out, to give you that gift, don't spit on it. Don't undermine it. If you don't understand how it can be used, if you feel like it's, if you feel like your castle, your testimony is weak and ineffective, then you need to take time, like the word logos here, has the, has the previously or specifically put together. You need to take time and build that thing up. Don't lie. Don't fabricate it. You don't have to. Every single person devoid of Christ is a wicked and evil person who is selfish. Mother Teresa, void of Christ, could still do everything she did and still would be wicked and evil because she would not have motives that were true. It would be selfish. 
I want to encourage you guys today to get your thinking right on this. To think about your testimony as literally your most effective tool in our culture. That can go in any culture. That can translate. I was listening to um, N.T. Wright, and he was talking about sharing the gospel with a Chinese guy on a train. And the Chinese guy knew, I think N.T. Wright says, he knew about 15 words in, of English. And Wright doesn't speak Chinese. And he spent three, four hours sharing the gospel with this guy, using his testimony. And N.T. Wright is a big-brained theologian. He's a, okay, three, four hours, and he's like, and he just got past the death. But he was cultivating this story in a way this guy who didn't even speak his language would be able to understand. And he shares that story because he was like, I was on my way to a conference to help train a bunch of pastors on how to effectively share the gospel. And I didn't even think about this possible situation. And I'm here to tell you, every single one of you who has been born and saved by Jesus Christ can effectively go in any culture. Even if you don't speak the language, get an interpreter. You have the gospel at your fingertips. Your testimony is powerful and effective to overcome the work of the enemy. To overcome the strongholds of what the devil is doing. To overcome and see what God can do touch people around you. I've encouraged a lot of people through the years. We'll talk to them and they'll just be like, I just, I'm not feeling the presence of God. I'm not, I'm not, I just can't hear from God. And, and um, I started doing this when we were up in Wisconsin. And I said, well, go share the gospel with someone. Jesus is going to show up. And kind of like what Paul says, even if you do it out of wrong motives, share the gospel. It's okay. The gospel's going forward. I wouldn't encourage doing it out of wrong motives. I'm not saying that. But if you're not hearing, if you're struggling, go out and just share the gospel. He shows up because he's like, yay, here we go. We're going to see this happen. And it works. It's amazing how many people are, they, they just, they're not hearing from God. and they're, they're like, I need help, I need help. And you tell them that and they never do it. Well, you must not really want to hear from God or be with God. That's my thought. I could be wrong, but that's just my thought on it. But I'd encourage you guys that way. Think about it. Build up the castle of your testimony. Take time to think about it. Take time to do that. So this is the NIBV, the Nearly Inspired Brent version. Um, so <laughs> I changed it just a little bit to make sense for us today. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the recorded collection of the evidence gleaned from their lives. For they love not their lives even unto death. I just, was, as I was praying through it, I just really liked how that sounded. The recorded collection of the evidence gleaned from their lives. And it made me think, I know there's, I think there was a book put out, but Anthony brought up in the context of this passage, a lot of the terms used are in a legal sense. And it's used in a sense of, you know, having victory in a legal place, in a court case. And it made me, and I can't remember if it's a song or a book, or there was something when I was a brand new believer where they were talking about if you were taken to court and accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? If they literally took your whole day, 24 hours a day, Ezra, we followed you around for the last two days and literally recorded everything you did for the last two days on video. That's the next slide. Just see, if you want to leave, you can leave. But we're going to see if we can convict him of being a Christian. All right? How's that sound, bud? Does that sound terrifying or are you excited? Nothing? How many of you are signing up for that video? How many of you are going, put it up there? 24 hours a day, all day long. That's always stuck with me of going, if I was taken to court, could I be convicted 
of being a true believer? Could you be convicted of actually being a Christ follower? Of having your entire time scrutinized? I'm not saying we're going to do that. Buddy, it's not. See, it's not it. <laughs> I was looking around at who I could pick on, and you felt the less mean. <laughs> Because in the legal senses, we overcome the accuser of the brethren. That's another name. We overcome the accuser who brings us before the court of God and says, Look, look, look. And Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, who is poured out over our lives, comes into our defense. And he comes to our defense in the court by the blood of the Lamb. And he also says, Now I'm bringing forth my first witness After the blood of the lamb was testified in the testimony, which is victory, he says, we've got another case. Bringing Brent up to the witness stand. Cross-examine him, accuser, because you will not be victorious. Because he has a previously, specifically put together testimony that I have built inside of him. That's the picture I get when I think of that court scene. That God the Father is so confident that he says, put him on the stand. I want him on the stand. I want you guys to think that way. Think about your testimony. Think about your lives in that way. Yes, put me on the stand. Thank God for grace. Amen? Thank God when we mess up and we give the evidence to the enemy. The blood of the lamb is good, (laughs) and it covers. Thank God for repentance. Thank God for that. But he gives us this testimony. And 1 Peter 3, and starting in verse 14, But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. And do do not fear their intimidation, and do not be in dread. But sanctify Christ as our Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is within you, but with gentleness and respect. And keep a good conscience so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who disparage your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. This is a very common verse that's brought up with apologetics, and I think about it when it comes to our testimony. Always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is within you with gentleness and respect. That's respecting the person who's listening. That's like taking into account, like Dan brought up this morning, churchies, you know, this Christian language. I remember when I first started coming to church and it was like the blood of the lamb. I was like, What? What is my grandma bringing me into? (laughs) It was kind of fascinating. I was like, oh, cool. They do blood sacrifice here? Let's see this. But it was weird. Didn't make any sense. That's one of the things I want to encourage you guys. With gentleness and respect, you have to respect people. You ha- I remember when I first came to faith, I remember hearing a lot of terms and whatnot of the gospel being shared that made no sense. Sin. I didn't know what that was. It made no sense to me. You told me I was a sinner. I was just like, okay. Is that a gang? What is that? It made absolute zero sense. It had no context for where I was. I, didn't, I can't say I felt disrespected, but in a sense, if you're not speaking in a way people can understand, it's disrespectful if you're trying to communicate with them. So I'd encourage you, when you develop this, as you're building this castle, make sure it's effective. Make sure you use terms that people can understand. Make sure if you're talking about sin and somebody has no church background, you screw up. Everybody knows what that means. Three-year-old knows what that means. Mistake. We understand that sin has a bigger meaning. It's like, oh, it's it's Christianese, guys. (laughs) We can get to that. The blood of the lamb. Don't use that in your testimony. I mean, you can, but if it's somebody who doesn't know who Jesus is, it's not going to make any sense. And then you're going to spend a lot of time explaining it. It's, you're going way up here with something that needs to be milk. 
skim milk. Water with a few drops of milk in it to start with. <laughs> okay, think of it that way. Be respectful, be gentle, but be ready. Be ready. How many of you feel confident if I were to call you up right now and gave you 30 seconds to share your testimony? Uh, yes. I'm making note. All right. <laughs> okay. Confident. I want to see everybody's hands up if you know Jesus. Honestly. I want to see that. I don't want to beat you down with this, but I want to encourage you if you don't feel confident with that, this is an encouragement. If you want to have hope in the times to come, this is a way to do that. Now I want to read this passage as a, as a kind of a reason why. I, didn't, I don't have it up here. On Deuteronomy 6, he said, Now this is the commandment that state that... This is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your sons and your sons' sons, by keeping all his statutes and commandments. I love how he's saying, I'm giving this to you for you, your sons, and your sons' sons. He's like, I'm not just telling you this. I'm not just giving you this testimony for yourself for yourself and your son, but for your sons and your grandchildren as well. To think about it in a way that this isn't just in your level. This is for the next and the next after that. All right, and continuing, um, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I have commanded you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long, Hear therefore Israel and be careful to do them that it may go well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words I have commanded you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and they shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise, when are you not supposed to talk about what God has done? It doesn't really give an option of not in this, right? When I think of testimony, it's incredible how God is jealous for the story of His glory. It's incredible how often throughout all of the Old Testament, he is sitting there going, hey, build a monument so that you remember and so that when your kid goes, Dad, what is this pile of rocks here? This pile of rocks is where God split the sea and we walked over on dry ground. And I believe he says where we walked over because they had a national identity. It's our fathers, our forefathers, our family. We need to think about it that way. We need to see each other's testimonies that way. That way when we build our castle, each part of who we are are just different battlements. You want to hear what the Lord has done in my wife's life? It's going to bless you. Let me share it. You can do that. We can see how the God has worked in all of our lives and utilize that as well. That way, you know, if you're feeling insecure about yourself that day, brag on somebody else. Because ultimately, you're bragging on what God has done. All right, I'm going to continue in verse 8. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as fontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you. I, I mean, I love that. Tie it on your hands. Put it on your foreheads. Literally, obviously, I don't have anything on my forehead to dictate that. But you, you get what he's saying. Have it there right in front of your face, always accessible, always available to give a hope that lies within. Continuing on. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, give you with great and good cities that you did not build the house is full of all good things that you did not fill and cisterns that you did not dig and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plan and when you eat and are full does that not sound like salvation guys 
Does that not sound like what Christ has done for us? He has given us life, an abundant life, that we did nothing to deserve. He has given us peace that we have done nothing to earn. He has given us prosperity, and like Ray says, don't settle for money, that we did not work for. And then he keeps going. And and this last part here, listen to this, guys. He says, do all of this, and this is why. Then take care, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is the Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods and the gods of the people who are around you. For the Lord your God is in your midst a jealous God. And least the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you and he destroy you from off the face of the earth. I truly believe when we forget the testimony that God has given us, we grow cold and far from the Lord. And right here, he is saying to the nation of Israel, when you go into this promised land and you inherit like we have been inherited from the peace of Christ, when we inherit all that, if we do not have a continual reminder, if we are not preaching the gospel to ourselves every single day, we will forget. We will grow cold. We will grow apathetic. We will become lazy. If we do not keep what the Lord has done before us at all times. If we do not continually keep these on our doorposts. and on, I mean, if you want to literally write it on your doorpost, do it. There's no reason not to. It's your doorpost. Unless you rent, then ask for permission. Or tape a sign up there. Okay. But don't allow, that's, a, to me, that is a significance of how powerful this is for us, is it keeps the kindle of fire inside of us and living and active. It doesn't allow you to grow cold and apathetic. Because when we grow cold and apathetic, God gets jealous. I don't want him jealous in a negative sense towards me. It's a simple way to do it. It's a simple way to think about it. For one, it's, it's helped humble me at times to remember. I am only here because of what he has done. I am who I am because of Christ alone. I feel like I am a pretty amazing guy. But I can't toot my own horn on that because he has made me who I am. It's because of him. And if I brag on myself, it's bragging on him because it's who he has made. And every single one of us can do that. I've heard a guy, um, and, and it's awkward at first. I don't know if it ever gets on awkward, but a guy, he, he goes in his bathroom and he looks in the mirror and he goes, man, you're amazing. Look at you. You, what? there's no words for you. I, I, He's a Christian guy. I mean, I've done it. It's, it's interesting how encouraging it is when you look yourself in the own eye and you tell yourself, look at what God has done, and you share the gospel yourself, your own testimony. It's, I don't know, is it weird that it kind of makes me want to cry? <laughs> I'm weird. But I challenge you to try it if you haven't tried it, <laughs> okay? But it's just because it reminds me of, God, you are so good. That last song was wrecking me because I'm sitting there going, God, you are so good. He is so amazing. A part of that, let's say there have been 10, I don't know, how many people are on the earth right now? 7 billion, right? Something in that area, 8 billion. Let's say through all of history, there's been 10 billion people that have ever lived you do realize that your testimony is one in as many people who will ever live. That is your testimony. You are the only one who has that. You are that precious, that priceless, that testimony that God has given you. 
Have you ever thought about that? That the reality of what God has done in your life is that unique. There is literally not going to be anybody else for all of eternity who will have your story of God's glory. I just heard the other day this guy, he's like, man, imagine in heaven, we're going to go and we're going to sit in in Moses' living room. David's going to get up and he's going to share his whole life story. And then they're going to go, who's this? Hey, hey, new guy, Brent, come up here. David and Moses and Isaac and Jacob, they're all going to be on the edge of their seat going, tell us, tell us your story. Because it's going to be that unique. They're going to be that excited. They're going to be that entranced because it's what God has done. It's good to think that way, guys. It's not wrong to think that that's what God has done. Don't let it go to your head and get all proud of yourself. Don't go there. That's what the body's for. We'll help you with that. (laughs) All right? (laughs) We like doing that kind of stuff. (laughs) But I'd rather, honestly, and I feel like this is the way I was raised in this body, I'd rather err on the side of going towards that way with Christ. I'd rather err on the side of getting more intimate with him and going a little to the weird side that way than going legalistic this way. That's a feeling I have. And inside a community with the body, you're safe. It's okay to make mistakes. All right, I'm taking longer than I wanted to take. Here, let's go. In Corinthians 5, 16 through 20. I read this uh, last week, and I'm going to touch on it here. It says, From now on, therefore, we regard, we regard no one according to the flesh. We need to see our brothers and sisters in Christ as such. In Corinthians, it says, Love, the whole chapter on love. It does not account of wrong. It holds no history of like that. We need to see each other that way. We need to regard each other that way. Our first inclination is to believe the testimony. We are the believers. If somebody shares a story of what God has done, my first thing is to believe it, not to analytically break it down and disprove it and make sure it's legal and right. That's not my job. If it isn't accurate and right, it will show through time. If somebody's lying about what God has done, it will show. Time will tell. I'm not here to inspect that fruit. I'm here. I want to believe it, run, and go. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And all this from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Guys, you understand, if you are a born-again believer, if Jesus has saved you and you have had new life, a new heart, and Holy Spirit is in you, you have the ministry of Jesus Christ. And this is one of the best tools to use that ministry. It's the, one of the best ways to see that happen. One of the easiest, simplest ways to walk that ministry out. To where it's not a matter of what you should do, it's a matter of this is who I am. This isn't a matter of what I should do. This is a matter of me being me. It's so easy to share your story, guys. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We need to see the world in this light. We need to walk and see the potentials. And whether God calls you to get on a soapbox on Main Street and preach or share your testimony or do it that way, whether he calls you to run into people and try to help them out, however he calls you to do this ministry, do it. Do it effectively. Do it righteously. Do it with respect and gentleness. But do it. And one of my favorite parts is, in the matter of doing it, it's just who you are. It's just who you are. It's not what you have to do. Sharing your life story is easy. Has anybody ever asked somebody who has a broken leg or anything, a cast of some sort, how did that happen? 
generally they're going to tell you the whole darn story of how it happened. Some people are going to tell you way more. But even introverts are going to tell you the basic of what happened. Always be ready to give a defense for the hope that lies within. Why aren't you discouraged about what's going on in the world? Man, because I have hope. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Okay, I get it. Why? Because I have peace. How do you have peace? I have peace because there was once a time I hated myself and every aspect of my life, and I had no peace or hope for anything, and Jesus encountered me. And he changed the essence of who I am. He changed the entire reality of who I am. And now I have hope for tomorrow and I have peace when I go to bed at night. That's a testimony, guys. That's the, the reality of what our testimony is. I just shared my testimony with you guys in just over 15 seconds. Just over 15 seconds. That's how we have the victory. That is literally, what are we doing on time here? Oh, we are great. I got 35 minutes, <laughs> if I can't say part of me. That's how we have the victory. I just wanted to make sure we had time to do what I'd like to do here. So the practical tools. How do we practically use this? How do we see what's coming and practically put it into work? So first, we need to have our story, your testimony. You need to help. If you need help doing that, get help doing it. But you need to take the time, write it down, figure it out, think about it, plan it. That's the logos. And the wonderful thing is uh, that logos there, there's another Greek word for rhema, and it's like the revealed word. It's like the, the specific. When you have a general word, then it comes pinpoint down to you. You could take the general gospel, which is for everybody, and you can pinpoint it down through you and hit somebody specifically with it. And Holy Spirit freaks out with stuff like that. He loves that. He loves going from the Logos, the general for everybody, down into the rhema, the specific, the pinpoint, and it, jumping on people that way. And this is one way we get to see that happening. So, with our testimony, wow, that's weird how it offset. We have, I believe we need to be able to do it in 15 seconds, one minute, five minutes, and beyond. I really do. I believe that that is an effective and practical thing that we need to practice and do. So this morning, I want to practice that. I remember some who raised their hands. This morning, I think we can do an open mic, right? Yeah. We're going to practice that. So before we practice that, I want to give some pointers because we are going to do 15-second testimonies how many has ever how many of you guys have ever shared your testimony in 15 seconds a few how many think you can do it i mean you just watched me do it it's not that difficult so let's look how all right let's figure this thing out a 15 second testimony this is the focus two pre-christ realities for me i hated myself and i had no peace or hope that's generalized who I was. Oops. Then you need to have the Christ intervention, the Jesus intervention. So take five seconds, two pre-Christ realities, five seconds, Jesus intervention, and then two current living realities of where you are right now. That's a 15-second testimony. You can do that anywhere, any <laughs> How many conversations do we have that go over 15 seconds? I just shared my testimony with a guy last night, 15-second testimony. He was like, are you a pastor or something? I'm like, well, I'm a bread guy, but yeah, I'm a pastor. It's still weird hearing Pastor Brent. I don't, it's been nine years, eight years, <laughs> but, I, but it's not because of that that I did it. It's just we're talking, and he's telling me about his kids, and then he's asking about how I ended up in Newton. Gospel time. And I wasn't even thinking that way. I'm just thinking, this is who I am. I was homeless, had nowhere to go. Took me in. Christ saved me. And he was like, 
Whoa. And it changed the conversation for a little bit. It was that easy, that effective, that fast. It is very fast. We need to have these for those... Uh, when Jesus said, let's go into the town and let your peace go out. And if your peace remains on somebody, stay with them and share with them. If it returns back to you, meaning like if you start telling somebody about how Christ saved you and they're like, Bleh, and they start arguing with you, and just, okay, thank you, love you, bye. Be respectful, be gentle, don't argue with them. For one, how many of you can argue about my testimony? Come at me. <laughs> You're not winning. It's my story. And as long as I'm truthful, you can't win in an argument against me. And I'm not even going to argue with you because that's a silly argument, right? It's not confrontational. This is what God has done in my life. Can't argue with that. So that's a 15-second testimony. A one-minute testimony is a couple realities and one situation. So like I like to think, I hated myself. I had no peace or hope for the coming days. Here's an example. I, I, this, we had planned this entire week, my buddies, we had planned, we had bought way too much in alcohol and drugs. And we had stockpiled it at this one guy's garage in his shed because his parents were going to leave. And as they were going to leave, we were going to take that week. And my goal was to take as much and drink as much that I'd die. That was my goal. Situation. You got a minute now. So you got five seconds to do your two realities. You got 20 some odd seconds to share a story. Then the Christ intervention, you get a little bit more. I was standing there. I didn't want to be there. All these weirdos were singing about this guy that I could care less about and just ticked me off all the time. And then all of a sudden he's right in front of me. And I thought, my God, he's going to kill me. And he should. <laughs> That's Christ intervention. I hit the floor crying. They laid their hands on me and they were praying for me and the power and the love of God filled me up and changed me. When I got up, it was undeniable I was a different person. And there are people here that can attest he was this way and all of a sudden he's this way and it makes no sense. And now I love who I am and I have hope every single day. One minute. Can you guys tell I've taken some time to do this? Can you guys tell that I've practiced this, that I've spent some time to do this? This isn't some rabshab fortress that I threw up in the middle of a swamp. This is going to stand. You put me under the pressure, I'm going to be able to. I didn't rehearse this part. I wasn't planning on it because I wanted to make sure we have time. So now I'm talking too much. Your five-minute plus, use a tool. There's three circles, three crowns, the dueling timelines, the uncrossable canyon. We all have so many. You got the dollar bills. You got the, I've got these little optical illusion cards. There's so many tools that are available. Use them. They generally take three to five minutes to use. Pull them out. Use them. If somebody gets past 15 seconds and they want to keep hearing more, move on. I would always include your origin, your life, and your sin, the reality of who you are. The current state of the world. If you're sharing a five-minute testimony, you're sharing the gospel at this point. The current state of the world. The judgment to come. The consequences. When Jesus revealed himself to me, I fully realized that I was woefully inadequate to stand before the throne. I was woefully inadequate to even lay before the throne. I was, I was going, God, destroy me now. I was, I was like this... It was a, a combination of terror and sheer amazement. It's like, I do not even deserve to be on the same galaxy as this person of Jesus. The reality of Jesus, the love and his sacrifice, how to be born again, turn and follow him. And then also calling them as well to share. Calling them as well. You know, as part of doing this in Matthew 5, 17 and 18, we have been given this ministry. So when he brings this new life inside of you, this new life has been brought inside of you so that it can pour out into other people. So, with testimony, from what I've gathered over the times of taking people out and doing this, you are your biggest obstacle. When it comes right down to it, we talk ourselves out of sharing way too often. 
I do too. We get in our own way. Whether it's us or whether it's the devil getting in, messing with us, I guarantee you it's not Holy Spirit. There have not, I don't know if there's been any times where Holy Spirit's like, nope. My gospel's not going there today. That doesn't really make sense to me. He might say, no, not, it's not for you today. Or you're not going that way today, but his, he, he's good. Don't get in your own way, guys. Don't stop yourself. I want to skip right here. Yeah, it says right there, fail your way to success. Okay? Literally, fail your way to success. I mean, that's uh, what Edison invented, how many ways not to make a light bulb, but we only remember the one way that worked. All right? Trust me, people aren't going to remember how you fail if you keep failing, (laughs) because you will succeed. The power of God is with you. The body of Christ is with you. We will overcome. So I want to do that. It's our story. The, the little firework made me think of this little light of mine. Now this little light of mine. It's a great song. We need to sing it. I sing it. We sing it all the time around the campfire. We sing it in our church up north because the kids love it. And it's just true. We need to realize that. We need to, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Uh, Jesus talks about that. He said, don't put a basket over your light. If you light a light, like if we were to put all these lights in here, we got a lot of lights, bright ones, and we covered every single one of them with a blackout cloth. Would they be effective? It would make no sense, would it? But hey, Jeff, they're all too dim. Raise them up. Make them brighter. they got blackout cloth on them. They're not going to do jack. You can raise them all the way up. Unless they get to the point where they burn the cloth off, it's not going to do any good. Don't do that to yourself. Don't get in your own way. All right? So now I want to literally take some time to do this, guys. I want literally, those of you who raised your hands, come up. We have 15 seconds. I have a timer. I want to take some time and do this. Partly because it's going to be encouraging to hear other people share their stories. I hope some of us fail at it. And that's okay. We can laugh. It's, it's safe. <laughs> it's a safe environment. I checked. Nobody has rotten fruit. All right? The rocks are right outside the door, but nobody's going out that way. We'll put a guard out there. Nobody's going to go get them, all right? But literally, I'm going to have a top a stopwatch. I really want some of you guys to come up. 15 seconds. Who wants to be first? I, I, I so we fail our way to success. That's really what it is. 15, yeah, 15. I got a timer. Is this, this one good? All right, well, I'm going to stop you. I'm starting it and stopping it. And it's, just, it's okay. I, but I want to encourage you guys to do this, all right? Can you do it? 15 seconds? All right, you get what you got? Two, Christ, two? I don't know if I got two. Yeah, I'm going to work on it. All right. All right, ready? Set. <laughs> Go. There was a time in my life when I was selfish and prideful, and I didn't have purpose. But I came up against um, a scripture that told me that if I didn't believe in Jesus, who was the only Son of God, I, w- I was going to be ok- I was going to make sure that I did. I asked God to forgive me, and I <laughs> no, I'm running out. I, and, and I you know didn't run out. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> I know that He forgave me. And now, <laughs> now I have joy and love for people I never had before. Amen. <laughs> 30 seconds. It's good, but it takes practice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. It does take practice. It's not the way we think, but if you get it down to 15 seconds, trust me, you're going to have a lot of times you can drop that in there and people don't even know you're doing it. Who's next? If you go much over 30 seconds, I will start. 15, right? 15. I want 15. Let's see it. Tell me when to go. Oh, yeah. Go. Okay. There was a time where I feared God. I just had a misunderstanding about him, and uh, I asked him to uh, reveal himself through the word, 
and God revealed himself to me and showed me his mercy, and now I'm walking in it. Mm. Amen. Woo, 14. Uh, 14 uh, seconds. Uh, <laughs> you were practicing. Good. Just there. Yeah. So he just started practicing, and he already beat his time, guys. That's how. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Exactly. What he was saying there, if you use the 15 seconds in a sense to see if they're open to hear the gospel, and if they're open, then you keep going. This is not the time to give your whole life story. This is the time to test to see what God is doing in their hearts. Who's next? Does this encourage you guys? I love hearing testimonies. Is it help to not see this stopwatch probably? <laughs> or do you want it right in front of your face? <laughs> do you see? You just start whenever you want. Before I came to Christ, I was an unforgiving and anxious person. I had hatred towards my dad. But by the grace of God, that is gone. And I have chosen to forgive my dad. It's a daily choice. Amen. 14 seconds. <laughs> Amen. Isn't God good? Yeah? Come on. Who's next? We've got plenty of time. Oh. I was born and raised in the church, riding my parents' coattails to heaven, I thought. And then one day, God put a picture in front of me that I had two paths, and I had to pick, or I was going to be on the wrong one. And I made a decision to follow him. Amen. Good job. You got it. 15 seconds, guys. <laughs> Amen. Now, we know some of these people, and you would say that kind of sums it up real briefly of their life, right? It's good. All right, come on. Who's next? Yeah, that's okay. You can come up and wait up here. <laughs> I used to be a very selfish and self-centered person, and I felt like I had to earn my uh, love from God. And then I realized that I needed to quit fighting it and understand that it was a free gift for me. And now I live in peace. Amen. 15, you got it. Good stuff. Amen. Should I start calling people out by name? Yeah. Yes? <laughs> All right, you're next, Ryan. <laughs> there was a time I was full of hatred for myself and everyone else around me, and then in loneliness, and then God changed my life, and I surrendered to him, and now I have family, and I'm okay with myself getting closer anyway. <laughs> Amen. Look at that. 15 seconds on the dot. Very good. Amen. Now you're cutting in line. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Come up here. <laughs> I'm having fun. I love this. Um, I used to think I was good enough, um, but I was anxious all the time. And then I had this encounter with Jesus, and he just opened my eyes to who he was. And now I have hope and this amazing peace. Amen. You did it. Perfect. Very good. Come on, Ryan. <laughs> you just wanted to be called out? You didn't have the courage to do it on your own? That's why we have the body. <laughs> uh, there was a time in my life where my whole focus was having fun and adventure, and uh, honestly, I was miserable. And there's a time God showed up and said, if you serve me, it'll be a lot funner than serving yourself. And now I love life. Amen. <laughs> good job, Ed. 14 seconds. Very good. Come on. I know there was a few others who raised their hands. Uh, they haven't come up yet. All right. I believe in God of miracles, and I've witnessed miracles. The biggest miracle I have ever witnessed is God changing a sinner like me into someone who is righteous and able to stand before Amen. God with peace in their heart. Amen. Thank you very much. Now, did that seem longer than everybody else? It wasn't. It was one second. You've got time, okay? That was great. All right, come on. My wife 
<laughs> do you want to see the watch? <laughs> Whenever I'm starting when you start, so you're up. Okay, early in my life, I was buried under the weight of living for the approval of others, and I, be, and I was a very prideful person. And then Jesus came to me and said, no, you have to surrender that life in order to have freedom from that burden. And so I surrendered, and now I walk in freedom, and, uh, and I, can, uh, I, don't, I don't have that. Uh, ah! <laughs> I don't have that weight on me. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she won that bet <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> um before i i haven't really had time before i was a christian that i can remember but i have had some times in sin and i'm not in that sin anymore and i've been forgiven and i have a peace over me and no anxiety amen very good very good thank you Who's getting encouraged? I could do this all day long. I read biographies and tests of, oh, this is literally, until somebody says stop, I'm doing this until nobody comes up. Come on, who's next? Come on, somebody. Ryan keeps pointing at Callie. If I say her name out loud, she might come up. <laughs> but I'm not going to look because I don't put too much pressure on her. <laughs> Any more bold youth? Come on. Does anybody feel like Holy Spirit's saying to come up, but you don't really want to? You're like, I'm not raising my hand for that. <laughs> I think I can come out to you. How far out can I go with the mic? As far as I want. So if you want to stay in your seat and share your, your story, let me know and I'll come to you. That's okay. That's part of practicing. You don't have to come up in front of the lights and all that. Who? Tim, come on down. What's the bet? Do you think you can do it, Lindsay? Yeah? You think you can do it? I have no idea. <laughs> my, my heart's like, <laughs> let's see. What are we at? 80, 88. 88. We're going. <laughs> We're going up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a camera right there that's streaming yeah. online. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, so I grew up in the church, and I tried to do things the right way and all by myself, but the Lord showed me how faithful he was in my life, and now I live in peace and, and extreme joy. So, yeah. Amen. Great. Dude, you did it great. You could have taken more time. Very good. Awesome. And his heart rate really was going up quite rapidly there, guys. <laughs> so it's okay. Who else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Nobody? You coming up? I saw the wiggle. <laughs> All right, you got 15 seconds? Um. You don't know? All right, you ready? If you don't want to look out that way, you don't have to. Um, I used to be a very simple person, but then I found God in the Holy Spirit, and it l led me here with a lot of church family and friends amen very good thank you awesome awesome very good oh come on you're getting pointed out <laughs> you want me to come to you no anybody want me to come to them Can I start calling people out? I'm looking for permission. <laughs> no? Is that it, guys? Are we done? Does anybody feel like you should? Your chances are running out. Holy Spirit's saying do it, do it. Not to guilt you. <laughs> Nobody else? All right. Isn't God amazing? Isn't he good? That's the testimony, guys. That's how simple it is. That's how real it is. Now, everybody who came up here, did anybody completely do a horrible job? Not a single person. And uh, did anybody ever practice a 15-second testimony who came up here? Ryan? 
Yeah, Ryan said he has. Everybody else is shaking their head. 15 seconds. That is one of the most effective tools I have in my tool belt in sharing the gospel, guys. I figured that and it saved me an immense amount of time. It saves me a time because I can put that out there. And if somebody's open to hear, I know. And if they're not open to hear, I know. And yet I'm still sharing what God has done. And most people are going to let you talk for 15 seconds. They're not going to interrupt you. Even if they're vehemently angry and mad at God, they'll listen to your story. That is one of the beautiful parts about our culture. We are in a post-postmodern culture, a postmodern society. Um, I don't know if you guys realize this. I love history, and I love uh, social stuff like that in history. But the society of ancient Rome, when Christ came, is one of the closest to what we live in today than any other time in history. You guys realize that? That Jesus chose that time because he knew his what he did would be that impactful and powerful for the, all, the whole world. Our world society is mirroring that society more closely than any other time in history. That's how effective we can be, guys. That our society as a world is lining up. You can share your story. The, all the movements, the, uh, the LGBTQ movements, all of the movements, all the gender movements, all of that stuff, what is it based on? This is my story. That's why you can't argue with them. Don't. Here's my story. Here's who God is. Most people have no idea who God is. Most people don't realize that God brings hope and peace and life and fun because they've been taught this lie from the enemy that he brings laws and servitude and bleh. I was raised pagan, and I, that's what I thought about God. That's the significance and the power. That's how you can own your story. Take the time and do it. If you want to see the times that are coming, and if the times that are coming discourage you, here is a practical way that you can take your time, and encourage yourself. Be built up. Encourage in the body to have hope for when these bad times come. Because they're going to, and that's okay. Jesus said, this stuff's coming, but I have given you hope and life. He says, I have given you everything you need for life and godliness. And that's before we had access to this. Thank God for the Bible. But he said that before we had wide access to this. That means even if you don't have access to this, you have everything you need for life and godliness. That means you have everything you need for the ministry of reconciliation through your life. Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you you go. It's hard to forget God's with us when I'm sharing how he's with me. If you forget God's with you, you probably haven't been sharing. Don't take it as a down thing. Just take it as a reminder of, okay, I forgot who I am. This is who I am. I am a child. I am a righteous one. I am a holy one. I have been set apart I have been called before the foundations of the world. God looked into all of time and he saw Brent and he said, yeah, buddy, he's mine. I'm going to go get him. Put your name in there. Do not be frightened. That's a command. Do not be dismayed. For our Lord is with us, guys. Don't allow anything, anyone to undermine what the blood has bought in your life, your precious, amazing life. I'm going to pray if the worship team wants to come up. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for paying for my life. Thank you for paying for my story. Lord, I ask that you would bless us with the resolve to obey your command, to obey not being afraid, not being dismayed, not being scared. Help us not get in our own way. Help us to seek your face and you alone. Help us to truly take this ministry of reconciliation as our own.
and realizing that you have given it to us. Thank you, Jesus, that you have. Thank you that you have given us a way to go forward. Lord, I ask that you would just bless every single person hearing this, that they would, they would take the time, that they would stir themselves up and remember who you are and what you've done. Father, bless us, encourage us. I love you so much, Jesus. Amen.